I'm Marcus Lynn, the host today for A Scout Is at the Hanson Cub Scouts Touch a Truck event at the McQuan Elementary School site. Um, I'm here with Megan, and she's going to talk a little bit about what the event is for. Um, so, do you want me to hold this? Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, we decided to do this event to raise money for our Boy Scout pack. Um, and I came up with the idea because I have three little boys who are pretty much obsessed with trucks, and Touch a Truck has been a big thing lately. So, I thought, what better way to bring in money and bring the community together than to bring a bunch, bunch of trucks together? <laughs> And now we were going to go around with some of the scouts and they're going to show you what type of trucks and what their favorites are. This is the back seat of the fire engine where the firefighters sit on their way to, to, to an emergency. These are air packs. Where, where firemen put them, they, they store them in the seats so when, so when the firemen get to the call, they can just throw it around their back and release it and run out into the fire to hopefully save as many, to save as many lives as they can. There's also a fire jacket here, hooks there. There's radios, three radios up here. Batteries and chargers for any power tools they may, they may, we may use. Spare gear, we have helmets, boots. Boots and pants are right here combined. Um, we have an, another air pack over there. And we have some more fire gear over there. And we have a seat there. That's pretty much the back seat of the fire truck. This is the passenger side. On the passenger side, you may think it's very boring over here, but it is not. Right here, there is a bell. We also have another air pack back here. Caution tape. This, I can, no, I should be able to tell you exactly what this is. This is, oh, it's um, an infrared camera, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a infrared camera. We have air tank right here. We have, there's a for a horn, not positive. Like I said, loudspeaker here. Standard 12 volt plug. Rescue wipes. Um, street listing book right there. I forgot to tell you about that. Um, handle. There's a sun visor that can go down if it's too sunny. You need to see. Um, and this, I, 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 I'm honestly not sure what this red button is. I don't think you guys can see it, but. There, there's also containers right here. I can, I can open them up right here. Okay, I'll ask. So that's the front seat of engine one. This is where you hook up the hoses to put out a fire. Right here, some of these, this one is, these two are to let water out. This one's for a smaller hose, this one's for a bigger one. This one is for taking water in. Because if your tank's low and you're running out of water and there's a fire hydrant nearby or a pond, you hook up those, these black things up here to it. You put them in and you turn this, which opens a valve, which lets water into the tank and then it comes out, and then it comes out of these. And there's also a cabinet, there's also a cabinet right here. There's a air hose right there. There is also a bunch of hoses right here. Also a bunch of hoses right here. You can see. I'll close it down. I'll close it. So that is the, oh, there's also steps here for when you gotta go and get stuff off the top. And that's the pumping side of engine, that is this side, the pumping station of engine one. So this is the back of engine one. So in here, we have the jaws of light, life, which are used to spread metal. Like if, you get, if something gets stuck in, 
in um like a metal fence on and they can't bend it they would get these you know and this would bend it out there's a, a big engine there's an en your hydraulic there's just some sort of engine in there that moves the forks maybe slow but it's powerful and then over here there's hoses that's what powers this tool and this these are cutters these can cut materials when you can't bend them and this is the hose that powers that and then this is a banger down here. You bang with that um, saw size crowbar right there. And there's steps that fold down right here. Just fold down right here. And you go up. And you. And there is hose under here. There's big yellow hose. There's a lot of hose. There's there's hundreds of feet of hose in, under there to fight big about fight big house fires. Mhm. Mm I think I'm not positive. There's also a water cannon on the top. You probably can't see it, but there is, there is a water cannon up there. The fire firefighters go up and they spray water on big fires if it's too if they can't get close enough with just hoses. They'll take the truck in closer and have the truck and have the truck and go on the truck and, and f spray water onto the fire since it's too dangerous to go in close with with with, with the hoses i showed you a couple minutes ago and that is the back of engine one. Oh wait no i forgot something let me get down And, and over here, we have ladders, we have pullers for, these are for stabbing holes in houses for, so there's ventilation, so smoke can get out. And these are ladder, ladder feet too. And that is the back of engine one. And this is the, the, the main pumping side of engine one. We have, the, this tells you how much water you have in the tank. You have, same thing I told you last time. This, hook up giant black pipe to it so you can get water from fire hydrants or ponds or lakes. Uh, hoses for putting, you check these, you connect hoses to these. And these are, this is for the water, water, the water cannon I was talking about on the roof. This is how you turn that on. There's foam for when it's a gas fire. You don't want to use water. You use foam so it doesn't explode. This is how you open up the valves. You also open up a main valve right here. And then there's, then there's a, also a bunch of other, a bunch of others. Oh, wait, wait, there's one thing I forgot to show you. Up here, there's even more hose. I know, right? How much hose do they need? They need as much hose as they can get for some fires. So this is the tech team's collapse unit, and since I don't know much about this unit, I, 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 my friend Kevin here is going to be doing the tour. So I'm giving the mic to him, and he's going to sh sh show you all about the, this amazing truck. Well, thank you, Jack. We have here is this the Plymouth County Technical Rescue Team's collapse unit. This truck will go to any type of large-scale incident, any type of collapse, building collapse, trench collapse, parking garage collapse anything of that nature. We have tools on the truck that will get you into anywhere, no matter what the material is, be it steel, wood, concrete. And starting on this side of the truck, we have, this is our electrical cabinet. This truck has three generators on board. You've got two of them here. One on the back of the truck that stays with the truck. 
When this is at a scene, this truck acts as a charging station, base station, and staging area. In this cabinet here, we have our personal protective, personal protective equipment and decon cabinet. When they've gone out, especially the swift water guys, they've been out in the nasty swamp, the water. We fill this out with detergent. They come, they clean all their wetsuits and everything here. This is our repair cabinet. You find most regular mechanics, hand tools, and so on and so forth in there. This is our bit cache. This is where you'd find all our bits and drill bits and chisels and grinding wheels and saw blades for all the tools we have on board. Out front here we have two, two versions of the Jaws of Life. This version here is a cutting version. This is for cutting. This one's for spreading. Both of these would be used at any type of car accident, but at the Tech Rescue Team we use them differently. We use them inside of a building. That's why these are battery powered. This here, this is a concrete cutting chainsaw. This chainsaw can be plunge cut in any type of concrete, asphalt, brick, masonry, and it's a diamond tip blade. The key with that is use lots and lots of water. This cabinet here, this is our cutting cabinet. We have oxyacetylene and we also have petrogen. Petrogen is oxygen gasoline and there's a um, it's required by FEMA for uh, to be on a uh, Homeland Security cache. This cabinet here is a continuation of our, of our cutting cabinet. This tool right here is in what they call an exothermic um, cutting system. It uses consumable rods. You take a rod like this, it goes into a holder and you strike it like a big match. And as you're cutting, the rod consumes and it cuts uh, steel. This is for fast cutting. Not very clean, but fast. We also have a port of power and two electric uh, jack cameras underneath here. This is our Stanley system. This is a giant uh, hydro, uh, hydraulic power, power pack. This power pack will power a, either a, a drill, this is a big um, boring drill, a jackhammer, which you'd find on like any type of road construction job. <coughs> Another jackhammer. Another concrete cutting chainsaw. <clears throat> and here, this is our hilt, what we call our hilti cabinet. All these are like hammer drills and chipping hammers and small electric jack hammers. This cabinet here, this is our search cabinet. In this cabinet, we have two search cameras. These search cameras. What we do, if, some, if we believe somebody's under something, we'll bore a hole down, stick the camera through. The camera will extend up to about six feet. You can go down and it pan and tilts either way. It's also got lights on the end of it along with a microphone. So if we find somebody we can, and they're still <clears throat> alive, we can talk with them. Um, in here we have what's, what's known as zap sticks. You take them, you turn them on, and you put them near like a power outlet or a power cable to see if there's still power to it. Be behind that we have listening devices. The listening devices get set out in a grid, grid pattern and they're very sensitive. You can hear somebody screaming, scratching, knocking, banging under, under a building or under a whatever. And they're very sensitive and what you do is as you're listening it comes out on a digital display and the stronger the stronger signal you start triangulating all the other ones it's a set of four of them and you start bringing them in bringing them in and bringing them in and the louder it gets the closer you're getting and that's how you triangulate where they are on the other side of the trail is mostly shoring uh, lifting and uh, wood cutting on the other side uh, we carry what's known as Paratech, 
Paratech will go into a, we would use on a compromised structure to um, hold it up. We could create a, create a, a wall and attach it to the, the compromised wall. So it make it, I mean, it's still dangerous to enter, but it makes it a little bit less dangerous. So, and um, this is, uh, this is the collapse unit. So this is the Hanson Highway Department's newest truck. On this truck, it may look like it doesn't, it's, not a, it's not a standard cab at all of any vehicle you pro, you've most likely ever seen. There may be gas, brake pedal, but there's a lot more stuff than, the, than just that. There is also, there's a dump bed. You gotta lower the bed, raise the bed. There's a Sanders. A lot more shifters than you're probably used to. There's even a trailer brake if you if you do put a trailer on this thing. And there's a lot of machinery in here. And to a fun part, a super loud air horn. This is the front of the highway truck. So this right here, you may wonder what this is. This is the mount for a side plow. It goes from the plow that I hooked up right here. The snow that comes from the plow hooked up right here, the bit, it's a big plow, goes from there, it slides, and then this one pushes it all the way to the edge of the road. It makes it a lot easier for clearing snow off the roads than having to hit it like five times just to get how you want it. This is Hanson Highway's, our, uh, one of our newest vehicles. This is our new front end loader. It, some people call them backhoes, they're actually called front end loaders because they, they load with the, the, uh, with, uh, with the front end, which I will talk about in a minute. In the cab, stand, kind of standard, steering wheel, shifting, gas, brake. Uh, or AC, there's actually AC and heat in here. Um, there's a joystick right here, which is how you control the bucket. Uh, there is lights up here. Those are what that is. Temperature control, radio, mirror. There is windshield wipers, uh, phone holder, GPS system. Radio. Uh, th that is basically, and there's also there is a seat belt, of course. You have to have a seat belt. There's a bunch of tools back here behind the seat. We have flashlights, chains, hooks. There's a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff here. And this is the front of the front end loader. It's, again, as I say, it's called a front end loader because this is the front and it loads from the front. There's, this is all run by hydraulics, bucket, everything is run by hydraulics. This is our biggest bucket, which is made of a lighter material than all of our others, so it is only used for picking up snow. So, standard bucket, and the wheels do not turn on their own, actually. It is hydraulics back here that go up and down go forward and backwards pivoting the whole front end that's because it'd be really hard to get giant wheels like these to turn without without major without spending a lot of money and time into fi trying to figure it out um as I said 
It is all run by hydraulics. We have hydraulic hoses, giant hydraulic there, which which does mo which that's the master hydraulic, which actually like picks up the blade, picks up the, the up the shovel. Um, gigantic tires, almost as tall as me. Um, that is the front end loader from Hanson Highway. So today we're at the Whitman Hansen, Whitman Hansen Community Access Production Vehicle. And I'm with Ryan here and he's going to give you a tour, you yeah. and me, a tour of this, this vehicle. Yeah, let's go inside. Okay, so we're here in the truck. As you can see, all of our equipment around us. Um, we'll start with the audio board over here. So this controls all of our audio. We have a, a player that plays music out of this. So you can play music through the board. Um, this is our switcher. So this controls the video going out to the TV here. Um, we have different stuff that we can pull up on the preview monitors. We'll do camera for now. We have some fo football game footage. There's a bar here that'll that'll fade it between preview and program. So if I put this on program, we can fade between the two. This is all of our graphic stuff over here. We have a, a a replay system here that'll do replay. We have our digital recorders in the bottom here. All sorts of different. Um, camera control units that control uh, the brightness of the cameras and different aspects. And just all sorts of bells and whistles. Anything to get your video production needs met. Right now, I'm here with Captain Scott Billings in front of the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department Mobile Command Unit. And he's going to give you a tour of this truck. Passing uh, now uh, over to Captain Scott Billings for a tour of the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department uh, Mobile Command Center. So if you'd like to go inside, this vehicle is available to any of the local municipalities in Plymouth County and beyond, the, certainly the 27 towns and uh, cities and towns in Plymouth County, uh, to support local police fire EMS incidents. Um, so if we can go inside, I can give you a better tour of the radios and computer and wireless technology that we have available uh, for you to see. Okay, so inside the vehicle, what you're going to see is a series of two-way radios and wireless components for both, uh, obviously, computer technology as well as the cameras that are on the vehicle. And really what the mission of this vehicle is primarily for is to support command and control. So any incident commander can request this vehicle 24-7, uh, 365, it's available. Uh, and typically what would happen is the incident commander or their staff would be situated in the vehicle and maintain uh, radio contact to their staff in the field. Um, typically those are for longer duration incidents, uh, whether scheduled or unscheduled incidents and events. And what these bank of radios that you see here are on different frequencies to support the local public safety agencies, whether it's police, fire, EMS, uh, highway, uh, DPW, water department, uh, harbor master, uh, certainly air assets as well. Um, uh, and as you can see from the rear of the vehicle, there are two fixed uh, cameras on the mast. The mast is approximately 50 feet off ground and we have full pan tilt zoom capabilities on those cameras to give the staff inside 
the ability to uh, visually uh, see the incident at a safe distance. Uh, so again, uh, the the real value of the vehicle is to allow for the command staff to come in mm -hmm. out of the elements, whether it's a perhaps a cold day, uh, a rainy day, or, or whatnot, um, to be in a mm -hmm. climate-controlled environment uh, to support their mission. is a all-purpose army truck from, well, war, basically, because it's an army truck. This army truck is has a big flatbed. This one is designed to transport people. There are many other ones that are designed to, tr to transport weapons, missiles, vehicles. They transport everything. They make vehicles that transport anything. That's how that's how much the army depends on their on their trucks. Up here, towards the middle of the truck, there is a giant spare tire. Yes, there has it. Sometimes the tires do indeed go flat. Doesn't happen much because they're such heavy duty tires, but sometimes they do go flat. And there's benches here. Adventures here for people to sit on. They, they fold up and down like that. I'm not going to do it right now. And that's the back of a all-purpose a, a military truck. So this is the 1990 military truck. So this is the front. Not all fancy stuff like the army trucks of today. Standard, just a standard metal, a metal wheel, gas, brake, shifter. Um, standard windshield wipers. The windshield wipers are ran off of small, these small motors. Um, heavy duty, heavy, heavy duty metal doors. Um, Honestly, it's a pretty awesome truck. It's an amazing, full-purpose 1990 military truck. As our last stop of the day, this is, well, it's probably a shocker that the state police would have a Mustang, but yes, they do. And here it is. It is a Mustang. I cannot get any of the details about it because it's classified. Even I don't know. Isn't that a jogger? Uh, all I know is that Mustangs are muscle cars and Mustangs go fast. That's most likely why they, why they chose a Mustang because they're fast. And they, and they look awesome. We're down at Sullivan, Sullivan Tires, Sullivan Tires truck and as you can see, I'm in a giant tire. <laughs> Holding on the tire is a claw that, that puts tires on, giant tires like this on vehicles. And Sullivan, and, and who I mentioned uh, that, uh, that this is Sullivan Tire's truck? And, and they both like we brought the tire because uh, kids will, kids will really, really like playing in it. That is a giant tire. And this that's the end of a scout is. <laughs>